Hello guys, welcome to the next Rifle Roast. This is Rifle Roast Part 2. Today we have a lot of submissions. Some of them were submitted for the first roast. However, we have a skydiving YouTuber that submitted some rifles for today's, uh, today's roast. So we're going to be looking at these. Basically guys, I'm going to be looking at a lot of people's rifles from my community. Now, let me tell you the lens that I criticize these rifles from. I criticize these rifles from a perspective of pragmatism and from money spent. So if you spend a ton of money on a gun, but it's not that capable, I'm going to dock you points, man. But if you don't spend enough money on a gun in certain spots, I'm also going to dock you points. If you're spending th money on things that just don't matter, I'm going to dock you points as well. Like I said in the last video, the time is coming when we can't really afford to waste money on guns. We got to maximize our dollar at, at every you know possible you know perspective and part of our guns. So here are some rifles that were submitted to me. Now, the guy who submitted these to me, he said these were not his. I don't know if he's just saving himself from wrath. But let's go ahead and start at the bottom here. We got the Springfield XD with some no-name red dot. Springfield XDs are very, very strange handguns. They got a really high bore axis, and they're not designed in America. They're actually designed in Croatia. For those of you that don't know, Springfield Armory is a basically a Croatian colony in the United States. So every new interesting design that comes out of Springfield it is coming from a Croatian designer. So this is a really weird gun. I have no idea why anyone would go for the Springfield unless you like grew up shooting them maybe, but I don't know. Outside of that, I don't I don't understand. So weird choice. It looks like it's intended to be a carry piece. Guys, stick with the Glock 19, stick with the Glock 43X, you know, there's there's better there's better options. I mean, if you really like SIG for some reason, there's still better options there. I think either of those would be better than the Springfield. So, weird. Okay, let's go to the Daniel Defense. This is a DDM4V7. Now, Daniel Defense rifles online. I don't know what it is. I have never seen a Daniel Defense rifle, a DDM4V7. I have never seen one that did not have a cheap Chinese optic on top. Okay, what is this? What is this? We have a $1,700 AR-15 and a $300 red dot sight. Does that make sense to you? Okay, does that make sense to you? Does it make sense to me? If you have the kind of money to spend $1,700 on an AR-15, you better have the money to put some good glass. I better see EOTech, Leupold, Vortex at the minimum. You know, like, I don't know what, I don't know what is going on there, so... It is so, so weird. What is this, too? You've got you've got a grip up here, but you got a grip back here as well. Wasted money. Get rid of that. You've got a fire field. Fire field light. Oh, my gosh. Are we going to the Airsoft Arena? What is this? What is this gun? What is that muscle device? This is, this is insane. At least it's got a sling. Okay? At least it's got a sling. So... Whew, this is the worst one yet, man. I mean, listen. Okay, so let's look at the... Let's look at the money here. You've got... 80 bucks in random BS accessories. You've got a $300 red dot sight. Let's just call it 400 bucks. And you've got $1,700 into the rifle. Um, so that's like $2,100. If you have $2,100 to spend on an AR-15 build, you can do a lot better than this, okay? What he should have done, he should have built an arrow precision, okay? He should have built an arrow precision rifle for about a grand, maybe even less. I mean, it depend, depends on what you get. That gives you... A freaking thousand dollars to spend on high quality glass setup. Maybe you get an ACOG. Okay, maybe you get, you know, some primary arms prism optics, because even though those are cheap, those are still really good. So you, maybe you get a prism optic, maybe you get a Vortex Viper PST, maybe you find a used Vortex Razor, okay? Like you can do a lot better than this for the money that was spent on this gun. So this is a this is this is a disaster, man. I have never seen a Daniel Defense rifle that didn't have cheap optics on top. Like, seriously. Like, not once. Like, maybe from Dee Dee's ad advertising. But when it comes to rifles posted on social media, like, they always have just the worst optics. So, sorry. Whew, I need to chill out. Let's go, to, let's go to this gun. Some random brand no one's ever heard of. So, it looks like a billet receiver set. I could be wrong. So, it might be a little expensive. Again, I'm guessing you overpaid. The stock's fine. That's the Magpul SL stock, I believe. Um, that's a totally acceptable good stock. The grips looks a little weird. I'm not sure what that grip is, honestly. That's a little weird. These Magpul angle Ford grips, okay? I used to have one of these. I've never seen someone shoot on a regular basis and continue to have an angled foregrip on their rifle, okay? I've never seen it. So, 
Again, this is wasted money. I can't blame him too much, though. This is something you learned that, you know, isn't really that helpful over time. That's a Stroke Beagle, a Vortex Strike Eagle. I'm assuming that's the 1 to 6. I pray if that's the 1 to 8, my head might explode. Um, the 1 to 8 Strike Eagle, just in, from what I've seen, it's just not too great. LPVOs, they're a little heavy. They're a little expensive for what they are. But, hey, I mean, this is this rifle for the money is miles ahead of this rifle. However, this rifle's still not complete. It doesn't have a sling. It doesn't have a light. What's going on there? What is this rail? This rail looks like, you know, you could have gotten it on Amazon.com. This muzzle brake looks like you got it from Wish. And why are you why do you have a muzzle brake on a 556 gun? Like what what are you doing? Why? Why? What is happening here? Um yeah, what a what a what a disaster. Okay, then we got creme de la creme, the scar H. Assuming this isn't an airsoft replica, which, oh man, I don't even know. What do we got? We got a Burris RT6 on top. Okay. Again, Scar H is like what? Three grand, four grand. You're putting a $300 scope on top. Sell all of this. Okay. Sell everything. This is what you should do if you're this guy. Sell everything, get a Glock 19, and then build out an arrow precision with a freaking maul, like IR laser, get a freaking pbs 14 helmet setup like that's what this guy should do he should sell everything and then build a great rifle with a great nv setup do you realize that's what you could do with this kind of money but no instead he got like a scar with the scope that the scar is probably going to kill he got a daniel defense that's trash my my garbage tier ar-15 is so much better than this by the way and he got like uh, again let's go back to the scar we got I, sorry i'm all over the place because i just can't believe what i'm seeing um we got a $50 um, bipod. I know exactly what bipod that is. I used to have one on my 22, and Elijah broke it. My buddy Elijah broke it. I didn't even blame him. You want to know why? Because it's 50 bucks. Like, why would this thing ever hold up? You got a muzzle brake from hell. I mean, this is like state-of-the-art 2010. I saw, you know, I read the Punisher comic books and thought scary guns look cool. I mean, what is going on there? Um I don't know. That grip's probably fine. It's not my favorite. What is this stock? You get rid of the UG stock? That's one of the best parts about the scar is the UG. Oh, I'm going to go freaking, I'm going to go drink some freaking girly fruity drink to chill out and then we'll be back. But I mean, zero, zero, zero all around. I, I, I'm going to go. I'm going to go take a break. Good freaking grief. Okay, we're back. This is, look at this. Look at the energy of this picture. This is so much better. This is from a good buddy of mine. Um, he was doing an armed expedition. Unlike the last rifle, okay, unlike the last set of rifles we looked at, he actually takes his gun outside. Now, from what I understand, this is a rifle chambered in 5.56, um, or it could be a 22, just based off the magazine. Well, I could be wrong about that. Um, it might be his 22, actually. It might be his 22. So, is this rifle good for the end of the world? No. I mean, the last thing you want is a 22 bolt action rifle. Like, Good grief, right? Like, can you imagine trying to fight off, you know, a freaking skinwalker or like a bandit or something with a 22 Pulte? So not good for that, but honestly, for chilling in the freaking woods, what a great gun, right? You can bring out a, you can bring out an empty monster can, set it up on some ledge somewhere, and it just seems like he's setting up, for him, setting himself up for a very relaxing day. He's brought a Milserp gas mask, ma gas mask. It looks like. I'm not sure if that helmet's ballistic rated. Um, it, I'm not sure if it matters. I don't think he's going for you know, super preppy end of the world stuff. He's got an appeal to heaven patch based, um, his backpack. I'm not quite sure what backpack this is. Honestly. Um, I'm not the most knowledgeable about backpacks. It seems fine. It seems like a perfectly decent day pack. He's got a K bar knife. That's the coolest part of this whole picture, but let's stick back. Let's go back to the gun here. Um, Again, I'm all about guns that have a role that are pragmatic. So this gun, you could hunt small game. You can hunt birds. Um, outside of that, you could teach someone how to shoot a gun and there are times in the SHTF when you just genuinely, you just need someone to have a gun, right? Like, hey, go stand over there and you just give them a gun. That way they just have a gun. And you know what? Sometimes in rare cases, that really is just enough. I mean, we look in Ukraine, we see some guys that have tertiary roles. They have Mosins, right? It's the same idea. So should he rely, you know, his, should he, should his life rely on this gun? I hope not. I hope it never comes down to that. But I mean, I don't think he should get rid of it. I mean, it, it's pretty. It's a pretty piece. It might be worth some money. So maybe it's a good financial investment. Assuming the uh, end of the world never happens, um, heaven forbid, right? No, I'm just kidding. But assuming the end of the world never happens, I mean, yeah, it's probably going to be worth some money. I think this is fine. This 
This makes me feel a lot better, uh, especially coming off that first set of rifles. Good freaking grief. Let's go ahead and check out the next one. Okay, here we go. I really like this gun, but again, look at what we caught. We caught a left-handed man. Sorry, dude. You know the rules. Mom goes into the fire. But other than the fact that this rifle is a left-handed man's weapon, which is it's really pitiful, uh, what do we got? We got an energy drink that... It's very girly energy drink. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I know Hot Topic girls don't exist anymore because they're all trans. But, I mean, that's what a Hot Topic girl would drink. You know, I feel like some of that longboards, you know. Um, you know, it's kind of a girly drink. But other than that, I mean, this rifle, let's go back to the rifle. I'm so distracted off those first set of guns. Um, let's go back to the rifle. This is great. The Sig Sour Grip, I have one. It's not my favorite, but it looks like that might be the Sig um, rattler grip, which is interesting. I'm not sure where he got that grip, but good for him. He's got the BCM vertical grip facing the right way. Um, some people have it where it's like, it's hard to describe, but where it's angled backwards, that just doesn't make any sense to me. If you have your BCM grip angled like this, it creates a nice pocket for your hand here. And uh, it just makes it very comfortable to shoot. So if you have a BCM vertical grip, this is the right way to do it. He's got an EOTech XPS, not EXPS, but an XPS. It's not quick detach, but he doesn't have any other sighting system, so it doesn't really matter. And even then, I mean, if you have co-witness sights, you don't need a quick detach system in the first place. So um, really like that. I love EOTechs. Um, I love the way they look. I love the way they perform. I don't think they're a great end of the world optic. Obviously, they're very vulnerable to EMPs. They're very vulnerable to uh, battery shortages. So, um, not my favorite for that. So, stock up on batteries. Whoever whoever rifles this is, um, he's got the Arrow Precision handguard, which is a perfectly good handguard. Very lightweight, very durable. Arrow Precision M4E1 receiver set. One of my favorites. Very good looking. Very affordable. It's got the Magpul MOE stock, or excuse me, the um, the SL stock again. I love this stock. What a good stock. This is a great, this is a great gun. He's got the uh, Magpul Gen 2 PMAG, my favorite PMAG. It doesn't have the over-insertion lug, it looks like. Or maybe it does. Am I retarded? I could be retarded. Uh, the sling, I'm not sure. Oh, Blue Force gear, great sling, you know. Overpaying a little bit, but I mean, I mean, obviously, I mean, this guy, he does pretty well financially for himself, it looks like. The only thing that he needs to change here, he needs to throw on a light. Get a stream light. Come on, get a stream light on there ASAP. But other than that, I like it. I also like his vibe, like... Where, where do we live, man? I, I like it. Can I come? Like, geez, this looks like a good setting. So overall, I mean, this is a, this is a really good rifle. This is one of the better ones we've seen so far, especially like if we're talking like price to performance, this is really good. Obviously I'm a slave to prism optics. So if I had this gun, I'd put on a freaking primary arms or, or vortex, but no, I like it though. Also, oh, also it needs a paint job. Of course, this sucker needs a paint job. But other than that, what a what a good gun. What a good gun. Get a light, though. Get a light. Get a paint job. You're, you're all good to go. Okay, guys. So the last three guns we're going to be looking at today, they're from a YouTuber called Rippers TV. Okay? He does, like, skydiving and guns and motorcycles. I checked out his channel. It's really cool. He wanted to submit his guns, so we're going to be looking at those today. Here we have an incredibly bougie setup. This might be the nicest gun we've had yet on the channel. Um, or on the series, I should say. Um, we got Lancer mags full of green tip. Green tip's not my favorite ammo, but to each their own. I mean, if that's what your zero set at, that's fine. They tend to be a dollar, two dollars more a box than M M193. Um, so not the not the best price wise, but hey, I mean, clearly this guy he does a lot better financially than me. So <laughs> you know, can't can't uh, can't give him too much of um too much trouble for that. I am not a fan of B5 furniture at all. Not, I hate it. I hate the way it feels. I, I hate it so much. But if he likes it, that's fine. I mean, as far as functionality, this is totally acceptable. Just not my thing. We've got an EOTech EXPS3 on a Unity riser. At this point, personally, for me, this is this gets to be way too high. Way too high of a mount, personally. Um, because the problem is, is if you have to shoot prone... Which, if you look at footage in Ukraine, I mean, that's what people do. They shoot prone a lot. If you have to shoot prone, I mean, you're going to be sticking your head up uh, to get, you know, your eye lined up with the sight picture here, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of going prone. Um, however, if you're optimizing for sort of a close quarters build, um, then it, it's actually preferable to have it, you know, really high up. But that's a great optic choice. That's obviously a great riser. We've got, I think that's called a... Um, 
Oh, ammonium nitrite. What's it called? I forget what it's called, but it gives off this gold finish. It's also incredibly reliable and incredibly smooth. That's really good. I can't tell the charging handle. I'm just going to guess it's a Radian. Good choice. Uh, we've got a BCM vert grip again, facing the right way. Good job. We've got a Geisley rail. In my opinion, um, Geisley rails are too much money for what you get, but if you can afford it, they're really good. We got a silencer close suppressor. I mean, if you're running any suppressor, I mean, that is just great in my book. You got a mini scout light, I believe. I think this is the single cell one. I could be completely wrong. Uh, again, for the money, I think it's a little much, but it's a surefire. It's going to be incredibly durable. So good job there. Um, overall, this is a really good build. I'm not so sure I like the sling setup. I've never liked slings that mount in the back, but that's just me. Um, if it works for him, it works for him. At least he's not left-handed, okay? So his mom is spared this time. Um, let's look at his pistol real quick. We got a Roland Special um, where you do like a funny jab with like a muzzle brake and a barrel. That That's really cool. It creates a very flat shooting Glock, which Glocks are already pretty flat shooting. So making it a Roland Special, I mean, it's, it turns into a freaking laser beam. So um, I don't think it's worth the money, but... If you happen to have, you know, side income, if you have night vision and a good backpack, you have everything else on your gear list checked off, I'd say go for it. Trijicon RMR, not my favorite pistol red dot sight. The glass is pretty, pretty, um, not blurry, but it, it warps a lot, a lot more than you think. You have to take the optic off to change the battery. So not my favorite red dot in the world, but it is going to be durable. And it looks like this is a really good end of the world setup. He's got backup irons, of course, which is really good. Um, yeah, man. Overall, I really like this Glock setup. I'm not sure how concealable it is. And that's something I love about Glocks is that you can op open carry them and conceal carry them. And they're great in both capacities. Um, so I'm not sure how much the roll and special interferes with that along with the light. Um, but yeah, overall, though, I mean, this is great. This is really good. Now, here's what I would change for the love of heaven. Get some freaking magnification, okay? Your gun is too expensive and too awesome to not have magnification, okay? You want a gun that's capable of doing a lot of different things. Here's what's great. You already have the Unity riser. So get the Unity magnifier mount that's flipped to center. Not only will it still be compatible with your NV, uh, it also looks great, and you're going to have a lot more capability. So that's what I would say. Um, Rippers TV, get yourself a magnifier. I mean, you put a magnifier on this thing, you're going to have a gun that's capable of doing a lot. Obviously, the barrel's not that long. Honestly, I'm not sure how much that matters. I think, you know, being able to be accurate matters a lot more. So, yeah, I'd get the magnifier personally. But overall, though, I love this setup. This is very, 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 very good. So good job. Okay, and this is the same wonderful skydiving gentleman. This is his, I guess, poor build, even though it's nicer than most people's builds. So maybe it's camera distortion, but I'm pretty sure this is a 14.5 pin and weld, which is why the A2 muzzle device is a little bit elongated. Here's the deal, guys. If SBR loss were not a thing, in my opinion, 14.5 would be like the GPR general purpose rifle barrel length. So, great barrel length. I'm sure this rifle feels very handy. I'm sure it's very lightweight. We're missing a sling, so no good. Get a sling on there. Um, these, um, This Magpul handguard, this is a great handguard. Very, 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 very affordable. This is a good upgrade. Really easy to put a sling QD in here. So, it'd be very easy to run a, run a very good sling setup with this rifle. So, uh, definitely get on that as soon as you can. This is a Hollow Sun 403, I think B, 403B. It's got ex a, uh, exposed windage turrets, so it's not the best design for a red dot. It's a lot like the Aimpoint Micro T1. However, I mean, I'm sure this is totally fine. This is definitely more of a budget build, although his budget build is my poor, or is my rich guy build. Um, this is a BCM upper receiver. Very, very nice, very high quality. However, BCM's been a little controversial lately. I don't know how many of you guys watch Gun Thoughts. What a great YouTube channel. They were testing a bunch of AR uppers, and BCM told them to not shoot any more than, like, once every 10 seconds or something, like, through their upper receiver. Like, hello, this is an AR-15. Like, this isn't Granddad's 30-06. Like, I want to freaking, you know, pump lead into garbage, you know? So... That's a little weird. So other than that, though, BCM, historically, they have a really good rep. Um, I'm pretty sure with their recent controversy, though, you might just be safer sticking to arrow. But uh, but other than that, those is totally fine. Very conventional. 
uh, receiver set. Uh, this is, I believe, the K2 grip. Good choice. This stock is not my first choice of stock. Again, I, I don't really like those at all. But, hey, that's just me. Um, overall, though, this is fine. Needs a light. Needs more magnification. Uh, needs a sling. I don't know if you're noticing a pattern here yet. But this is a good gun. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is far from, you know, disappointing. The paint job's fun. Um, but, yeah, overall, no, this is good. This is totally, totally decent. Totally, totally respectable. Just get a freaking sling. Good grief. Get a sling, everyone. Get a sling. Last rifle of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, what do we got? We got a pre-brace band, or maybe not. Uh, <laughs> little uh, Mark 18 setup. So, anytime you have an AR-15 with about a 10-inch barrel length, um, you know, colloquially, that's a Mark 18. Obviously, this isn't a perfect representation of a Mark 18, but it's fine. Uh, we got a Palmetto State Armory lower. Okay, very nice. Very, very nice. We got the cheapest brace possible. I know because I have one. We got the cheapest grip possible. Now, that calls into question this quad rail. I'm not sure the brand. It's probably UTG, the cheapest brand you can get. Not knocking it, though. I've heard decent things about them. I'm not sure how I feel about this paint job. You painted the brace. You painted the handguard, but you didn't paint the rest of the gun? Did these parts come off other builds? I don't know. You got an angled foregrip. Now, what's so funny is angled foregrips, it's actually legal to put these on pistols. Um, so you'll see these a lot. Again, I don't, I really don't think they're that comfortable, but maybe it positions your hand in a good way to hit this clamped flashlight. I can't tell this flashlight brand. It's either an Amazon knockoff or I don't know, something else. I don't know. Maybe that light works okay. We don't know. I'm just going to assume it's cheap. Replace it with the stream light. 10-inch barrel. Do not go any lower than a 10-inch barrel for a 5.56 five, gun, okay? That is where you're going to have issues going any lower than that. But this is probably a very, very compact, very good package. I like the front sight base. Why is your rear sight deployed, you, you dork? Put that down. You don't, you don't need it. But let's talk about this red dot sight. So this red dot sight comes from a company called North Tech. I've been playing with this little box too much. Uh, North Tech's funny. Um, I don't know how many of you guys follow Vintage Firearms on YouTube. He actually works for them. Um, North Tech Red Dots, I, I've, I've heard varying re reviews. They're, like, really cheap. Like, this Red Dot goes for $90. Bucks. Um, they're, like, insane cheap. So I have no idea if it's any good. Um, just to be safe, I'm going to tell this gentleman, please go get a Sig Sauer Romeo 5. That, that dot has a great reputation. It costs $10 more than this. Um, so I'd highly recommend replacing this with that. Also, again, we don't have magnification. Now, if you're going for cheapest rifle possible, I don't necessarily expect you to have magnification. So uh, maybe this rifle gets a pass, but I'd say in 90% of cases, guys, especially if you only have one rifle, get yourself some magnification. But spray paint the whole gun, replace the dot sight, replace the light. Maybe throw that away. I, I, again, I don't really see people keeping those. Um, I would really, you know, I don't know, maybe keep the grip. Um, this rifle calls into question this plate carrier. Now, I know almost nothing about plate carriers. I'm a chest rig shill. I will tell you all day you should get a chest rig before you get a plate carrier. I All I'm going to say is, please, please, Heavenly Father. And this is not taking his name in vain because I mean it. I really hope there's ceramic plates in there, okay? There better be some ceramic plates. If I find out those are made out of steel, okay, I'm going to I'm going to shoot them. I'm going to shoot the steel plates for you while you're wearing it. We'll see what happens to your precious jawline after I shoot your freaking plate carrier with steel plates in it, okay? You know what happens? That shrapnel goes that shrapnel goes and you know what happens to your neck? Gone. Your neck disappears. So, I really hope those, those are ceramic plates in there, okay? I don't even care the rating. Just, I really hope they're ceramic. But um, other than that, though, it looks like this is kind of a QD sling because it's got a buckle there. So that passes. Um, not my favorite build. Paint it, replace the optic. I think at its core, it's fine. I would keep the quad rail. Um, I don't know. I might need a lot of work. But <laughs> overall, though, it's not it's not terrible. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. I am all out of energy. Those first set of rifles took me out.
And just to be super clear, those rifles were not from Rippers TV. I know the intro made it sound that way. Go check his YouTube out in the description. He's got some really fun videos. So have a great day, guys. If you want to submit more rifles for the roast, go ahead and go to the description. There's going to be a Google Doc open where you can share with me. You can share pictures. If you need to create a burner email, that's fine. I know everyone's paranoid about Fed. So <laughs> anyway, have a good day, guys. Look forward to talking to you again soon. And please, please, for the love of heaven, Leave a comment. I love interacting with you guys. You guys are awesome. This is the best community on the platform. So take it easy. Have a wonderful rest of your day.